Hi everyone, welcome back to Gold Fries. Now this is my, finally, finally this is my video about the Intel Arc A380. Believe it or not, I've been actually testing it since like mid to late September. However, I was, um, a lot of things happened. For example, I was testing it not just in games, but I tested it in coding. So if that's a, I've tested it for one week, thought I want to publish it. And then the following week, I have another idea on what to test. And those tests can be time consuming and it can be a fail, it, fail test to, to get what I wanted. Then another week, more tests come in. So I did not manage to record. And as you know, through that those months, there were like AMD launches, there were like uh, various other events. So I have a lot of work and other things else. So it took a lot of time just to piece the information that I want to present. So finally, uh, this is the video. So yeah let's begin with this appearance of this card now this model is the astro intel arc a380 challenger itx 6 gigabytes oc so as you can see it is a simple looking card it's pretty much like the other astro challenger models for the itx series which is you can see single shroud with a single fan now over at the back you see that the shroud is uh, a little bigger than the PCB itself and then the PCB itself is without any back plate which helps lower the price definitely and then as you can see the heat sink over here the heat sink is not of the fin type it is more like a, this um, aluminum block which is totally fine and it has a PCIe connector of which later on I will elaborate on why I feel that this connector should not be there and then there's a real HDMI 3 display port so pretty much it for this card here over in Malaysia the price retails at RM799 over in the US or wherever parts maybe 160 ish based on my estimation on um, with, with the current exchange rate and all that well you guys if you just looking for it i guess amazon new it and all that should have the pricing in us dollars so over malaysia here yes rm799 now let's move on yeah so basically this card like what i said is pretty much like the other challenger models if you remember the ashrock 6600 xt that card retails at a much higher price when launched that was like what 2004 Malaysian ringgits at the time that I bought it and it uses um, fin type of heatsink this card no need right so let's uh, with that done let's um, look at the other things now like what I mentioned the strong point is uh, gaming is not this the uh, what you call this arc treaties strong point or any of the arc series i will have another review for the arc a770 so the a380 here it games fine however that is not its strong point so gaming wise basically on direct direct 12 titles it will work just fine like shadow of the tomb raider i ran it at 1080p um, like a highest profile preset it goes above 30 frames per second which is satisfactory for should be satisfactory for most people i guess um not for those who like me i definitely prefer towards 60 but that just shows that it actually can perform so if you look at the benchmarks here with the limited titles i've selected you see that the performance is a little over the gtx 1050 ti and that 1050 ti is at a very similar price point that's where the performance is nothing to shout about yet not disappointing because it's Intel's first attempt and they managed to get a card that performs pretty well at that price point. Now the thing about the Arc 380 that you must uh, understand or at least know is that you need to enable resizable bar to get the best performance out of it. So what does this mean to the average user? Well, two things. First, if you are using an H system that does not have a resizable bar feature function on the motherboard BIOS option, this card will not perform well. Avoid, go with uh, whatever else, just don't get this card. Sorry Intel, because that's a fact that resizable bar is uh, required to get the performance. Same for the other use case is that 
if you are of a, a, a user of a more recent system uh, but for some reason you have enabled CSM compatibility that would disable resizable bar you cannot have both running at the same time and that will affect the performance as well so this applies to Intel ARC cards in general so if you are unable to have or enable resizable bar the performance will be impacted so have a look at this benchmark you see that the, that the performance when without the resizable bar enabled drops a lot it takes a huge hit now next up earlier i mentioned about this aluminum heatsink block and the 8-pin pci connector well let's talk about that now with the thermals and power draw so this is the hw info screenshot that i got after running shadow of the tomb raider 1080p at highest profile settings and as you can see the power draw and the temperatures are good temperature is within 80 degrees celsius the fan does not even scream and the power draw is below 70 watts so this is why i've said that the aluminum block is fine it lowers the cost therefore and it, it works very well within this uh, operating temperature range However, because of this, I feel that this 8-pin PCIe is unnecessary. If you understand how it is, an 8-pin PCIe power connector can deliver up to, based on PCIe standards, is 150 watts. The card does not run that. In fact, if you are going with just a PCIe um, slot power connection, the power can deliver. I mean, the power can be that can be delivered through the PCIe slot is 75 watts. I feel that if they could. Um, make it such that it runs totally from the power from the PCIe slot then you have an uh, even nicer what, is it, what do you call it a nicer selling point that it is a card that can you can slot in without having to connect the PCIe power connector you can use it as a secondary card without having to pull additional cables that is if you're on an ATX or micro ATX board that has um, enough clearance for you to use as a second card and now the next topic which is the strength of the arc gpu the the arc gpu the strength of it is not so much on gaming it games fine like what i said but um i believe i did not highlight it in detail earlier i mentioned direct 12 games it'd be fine what i meant is yes direct x12 games will be fine but if it's not direct x12 it's on direct x11 9 or whatever you may face uh, things like random stuttering and all that whether it's a significant stutter or whether it affects your game experience or whether you can actually mm, feel it I, I know that not everyone cares about stuttering some people just want to game they are fine with it but if you um, if it because it's going to impact your performance, let's say you're playing Dota or CSGO, stuttering can actually have negative effect on your experience, especially you lose aim and all that. It's not a good thing. So yeah, um, now back because I missed miss that one. Now let's go back to what I'm saying that the strength of the Arc GPU is actually in the encoding space of which it comes with AV1. Now I'm not an expert in this field. But I've done enough research and to put it in layman's term, the AV1 encoding is superior over like the H264, H265 and all that because um, to put it in the most layman term, basically for the same resource used, you get better quality output or for the same quality output, you use less resources. Um, let me put it to you in a more understandable, understandable way. Pardon me for being tongue tied sometimes. So, this means that if you're a streamer, for the X amount of bandwidth you use to get the output quality you get now, you can use the same output and get even better quality. Or, in the case where you have bandwidth issue, then you can actually maintain the same quality but lower the bandwidth usage for whatever purpose. I hope you get the picture. So, or in like, let's say you are the type that likes to encode videos for some reason. Um, you can basically, if you watch shows, you download NKVs or videos um, of a certain size, uh, certain duration, usually is like in the past, it's quite big. Nowadays, with H265, it can be smaller. Now with AV1, it can be smaller. So, basically, same maintaining same quality at a lower file size. So that is pretty much how I can 
put it best in layman's term for you. So um, the best thing to know is that the AV1 is easily made available in a card of this price point, considering that over in NVIDIA and AMD's camp, for example, the AV1 is only available in, to what I know, the RTX 40 series, which costs a lot from 6,000 Malaysian ringgits and above, from 4080, 4090. Same for the red camp, AMD's new RX 7000 series uh, GPU. Those graphics cards are that price range as well, um, around RM 5000-ish onwards, just to get the AV1 encoding. And those cards are huge. You cannot use them as a you are unlikely to use them as a secondary card. I mean, if you're purchasing that, that'll be your main card. It's too big to fit anywhere else. But this is the beauty of the RA380 of this size. You can actually just um, slap it on your graphics, uh, your system that has additional slots, and it can work as an it can work as um, an additional processing. Um, how is it? An additional processor, let's put it that way. And in fact, did I say that the the best part is AV1 on this thing at a low price? No. Um, the best part is that you can actually add on to your system. You see, um, not let's put it this way. So like let's say you have a computer system and then you want to improve the processing power of your system for maybe like or you decided to be a content creator and your processing system, you feel that if you're doing this video and coding time takes long and all that, well, consider this. Instead of upgrading your CPU, that definitely is going to cost, cost a good amount of money. I, I will not say how much. It can be hundreds or even thousands, depending on your currency, of course. And then depending on what system you're changing to, if you're using a really ancient system, like Intel has a TikTok cycle where um, you actually have a limit of how much you can upgrade on your CPU, or even you are using an AMD AM4 system, you have a, you you still can plop in a CPU to upgrade, but maybe you want to go an AM5 system. So basically, if you are going for a system that requires you to change your motherboard, change RAM, everything, the cost is going to be high. So what you can do is just grab this RM799 graphics card, slap it in, and you get your software will have a depending on software that is. I cannot guarantee every software. You just need to understand what software you're using. So from what I tested, for example, I even tried an AMD system, AM5 system, with an RTX 4090 inside. And then I have this card, and no, that was a 3090. I have a 4090, but that was, I was using a 3080 Ti at the time. And I had this card placed inside this, uh, this system. And guess what? It runs, no hiccups. And in my uh, DaVinci Resolve video encoding option, I do see this Intel AV1 option for encoding. So let's talk about the encoding benchmark part. How much better it is? A simple test on the handbrake, for example, we're using the AV1. I saw that the A380 outperforms the RTX 3060 that costs more than double. And when I had the 1490 with me, I tested the, the A380 uh, performs that level of the based on the frame the FPS the frame rate performs like that of a 4090. The only thing I cannot say much is that I'm not an expert in this field and couldn't I couldn't tell that much of the difference between the videos and all that. So just understand that that is performance speed on the AV1 encoding. It's just that whether you're able to harness this power, that's another uh, story altogether. And then even for the Vinci Resolve Studio, I managed to try encoding. Here's one with the RTX 3060 NVENC against the AV1. Well, similar time for this 4K video rendering. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you have a system already, you have your everything as well, and you, you can just use this one as an add-on and then it can be an option for you to have fast video encoding speed without changing your whole system. After all, those of you who know changing your whole system actually takes not just money but quite some effort. So basically that's it. Now, um, yeah, we come to the end of this video.
thanks for watching i'm glad that you stayed on until here so overall the intel arc a380 gpu is impressive and i like it that for the srock model they put it in this very compact form factor which is great for one that let's say you want to use in a small system or as an add-on it works really great my only issue with arc right now is that um, i hope that they, they can improve the arc intel arc control software it's like you guys have heard the reviews how the overlay it is you can't access anything on the desktop other than that thing there um it, it does have an option for you to enable that overlay to give you a lot of details during gaming i think that's great too you can see it here over the screen yeah so it's nice and then uh, other than that i hope that intel is paying attention to all this because improvement on this uh, arc, arc this intel arc software will help a lot especially now the issue is that um people will have reliance on their amd or nvidia interface i personally am using amd adrenaline a lot and then however we'll need arc to be able to cut at least be more user intuitive and friendly and that would help a lot so overall i think this is pretty much it i hope the software improves i hope the driver improves it's actually impressive for their x12 games and yeah so this is pretty much it unfortunately i'm not able to i'm not covering the other details like the xess and whatever other features that are inside the arc uh, gpu well we'll leave that for some other time that's it for this one i hope you enjoyed this video do subscribe to this channel if you haven't and i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye